I am Russ Housby and we're in Vanuatu. My father and me have both got the same name, so he was Trevor Housby, I'm Trevor Housby. No one calls me Trevor unless you're a bank manager or a policeman. Even my mum calls me Russ. So uh, my middle name's Russell, so that's, that's where it's been for me for my whole life. My old man was a fisherman. In Europe, he was a relatively famous fisherman. My father wrote a bunch of books on fishing and, and that was his thing without any doubt. Unquestionably a fisherman and I spent my whole life, I guess, as a kid, being completely absorbed in fishing. I could give you all the Latin names of everything. I knew every, every in and out of everything from, from an early age. And then my old man died when I was 13 and I stayed as a fisherman. I was always going to be a fisherman, mate. I just worked out that when I was a kid, I, need, I was never going to be able to do as much fishing as I needed to do. So I figured the best thing to do is be good enough that other people will pay you to take them. Came to Vanuatu after doing a can season to come and help somebody try and catch a uh, blue mole on a fly rod. So we came here to try and catch a fish for a world record and we caught the first fish ever on a 12 pound test. After coming here and seeing that it was a year-round fishery, the fact that you could fish every day of the year, catch blue marlins and sailfish and yellowfins, I thought it was a pretty cool place to try and set up shore. So that's what I did. This boat's 40-foot black watch called Nambus. We gave it the name. Nambus is the name of a tribe of people that live here. So the people that live in the middle of the bigger islands, Manbush, they call them the Nambus tribe. So you've got big Nambus and small Nambus. So we named the boat after those people because we figured it would be something unique and something that um, all the locals would know. But when you go there, everybody remembers you and everybody knows that name of the boat. That boat's got Caterpillar C9s in it and when they behave, they're good things. It was, it was built for somebody to fish out of cans as a private boat, so it has way more refrigeration than most boats. Around 400 litres of freezer capacity between fridges and freezers, so we can store a lot of cold on that boat. So in the tropics, never ending cold is a good thing. Going backwards is cool, it makes a big noise, it's awesome, there's waves and splashing and shit going on, and a lot of the times it's not the most effective way to get it. On today's occasion, it actually was, and he, he was, you couldn't have asked for a better one. So you got, to, you got to experience the full show. Like, it was dinner and a show. We got jumps, we got everything. Life in the flybridge, you spend 20, 22 hours a day living in the flybridge, or I do. So we fish most of the time. We fish when we do liverboard trips. We fish from when I can see to when I can't see, literally. So if we're dog tooth fishing, often it's an hour before light and an hour after light, so we fish every hour God gives us. So generally I spend my whole time there all day, I sleep up there at night and I come down for a couple of hours to cook, cook your dinner. That's about all that happens to me. It's a pretty salty existence. It wasn't raining for this trip so I didn't have to kip in a puddle. We've got a lot of islands and places to fish. There's 83 islands in Vanuatu, so we, we can really go wherever we want. We do a lot of jigging, lots of jigging for doggies. So we catch wahoos, we catch yellowfins, we catch dolphin fish. Over the years, we've, we've caught some pretty nice yellowfins. We catch a lot of fish in the sort of 40 to 70 kilo range. Every so often you get a real cracker. We caught one a couple of years ago, it was 97, which is a beauty. And we catch GTs in all kinds of different methods. Some of them are bycatch, and sometimes they're eating on live baits. Other times we catch them off 150 metre sea mounts jigging. Obviously popper fishing is the most well-known way of doing it. We do a fair bit of popper fishing for them. I remember seeing a real big black fucker come up one day trying to eat a dog tooth, and that dog tooth was 20 kilos. He's all over it, again, chewing his tail, and that was a serious one. We're here for the fish, we're not here for the money. So as anybody that's got half a brain knows, there ain't no money in charter fishing, so I ain't doing it because I'm going to get rich, I'm doing it because it's what I've got to do. So every lure, every hook, everything that we do on that boat is to catch the fish, and I want that fish worse than you do. Most of my life I used Shimano tackle. My father was involved in them. I guess as a kid, most of the tackle that I started off fishing with was Shimano. And over the years, I've gone on to use it more and more. Our whole boat's full of it. Every, everything on the whole boat is pretty much Shimano. So they've been at the forefront of a lot of a lot of rod and reel technology. I guess they more so reels because obviously they're a, they're a gears and bearing company. I've used the stuff. I've tried to destroy it. Vanuatu is a pretty good place to break shit. 
Like we blow stuff up. If it, if it ain't gonna cut the mustard, it doesn't take long to find that out here. We blow up all sorts of tackle, we break rods, we pull guides off of things, shit falls apart here. That Shimano stuff that we use, I believe it's as good as you can use. That's why we do use it. When we go blue marlin fishing out here, unless we're gonna bait and switch, where we can see the size of the fish before we present it a rod or a, a bait, I like to pull 130s because in the time that I've been here, we've caught some real little ones. I've seen them as small as 17 kilos, blue marlins, but I've also seen them as big as 514. So you never know when that next fish is coming. Best thing about catching number one is now you get ready to catch number two. And you can't do that until you caught number one. And it's like that for me with big ones. I caught one over a thousand, so I'm fishing for number two now. So we fish every day with all our tackle set up, all our gaffs laid out, everything's ready to roll. If the right fish comes along, he gets a boat ride. We're just fucking patsies in your game. It ain't all about you, big boy. When you turn up at somebody's house, you don't bring a gift, it's not cool. So whenever we catch fish and we're in the right places, we always try and give some fish away. Give them to the people, you know. At the end of the day, it's their fish anyway. We're fishing in their front yard, so it's, it only seems right to give, them, to give them a fish. Why shouldn't you do the right thing? What my old man say? My old man be fucking sad we didn't catch as many as we could have. So he'd have been saying, try harder. Don't worry about the ones you caught. What about the ones you missed, Nipper? That'll be what the old man would say. But either way, he'd be happy. You know, my old man would be a fucking happy man to see what we saw today. Anybody that likes blue marlin fishing likes seeing them fizz across the surface like you did. So when you can be in a position when you've got fucking 50 feet of string out and things flying through the air, that's as good as it gets. For me, for anybody, for anybody that knows anything about blue marlin fishing, that's the shit. Well, I tell you what, mate, you know when you see a cod come up from fucking 500 metres and its eyes are bugged out real bad? Your, your eyeballs were pressed against the fucking inside of that mask, mate. When that blue marlin was swimming towards you and I was trying to grab hold of the line, right, your eyeballs were like fucking this big and like I could see the veins where they were pressed against the glass. <laughs>